everybody's had school lunch. Now let's see what the kids have been eating over the past 100 years and how it's changed. Come on. So the 1910s look pretty basic to me, if you think about it. I don't know if this is a school lunch or a prison lunch. I don't know, this reminds me of when my mom was on EBT. Not a good time for any of us. Either way, let's try out this school lunch. I mean, what are you supposed to do with it? Make a little sammy? I feel like you almost dip it in this sauce. You gotta make the most of what you have around here. So I'm gonna use some of this chicken noodle broth. Oh, you actually got an idea going here. I don't think anyone ever did it this way. A little bread. Mmm. Is that tasty? A little bread, a little bite of noodles, and some chicken. Mm. It's not bad. It's not bad for the 1910s, but I could definitely think that the kids at home are definitely not looking forward to their school lunches. But, you know, if they do feel a little weak in the bones, they have some calcium to just drench their insides and maybe warm them up a bit. I think milk is gonna be the one thing oh, God. that people still do to this day. Of course they do, and except for people like us who are lactose intolerant. This is gonna be tough. So the 1910s were pretty basic. And the cheapest. So let's hope that in 10 years from now, the food gets a little bit better. And more money. Ugh. As promised, the 1920s look a little bit better than the 1910s already. Definitely. We have a nice substance in this meal. We have not just bread, we have grilled cheese. They decided to start throwing cheese in between the bread. And you got the fruit. That's like a well course meal. It is. So let's get into it and let's see what these kids were eating in the 1920s. I don't know, whoever made this did a real good job. I won't lie, this is real cheesy, real delicious. Here we go. Oh my God. Was that one or two cheeses? That was two cheeses. I don't know if the kids were getting two cheeses back then because they were definitely mm -hmm. probably trying to cut costs, but wow. I'm definitely coming back for this one. And just for a few pennies more. Oh, I will say the soup that they served back then, a little wishy-washy. Yes, Jake, with this old fashioned vegetable beef stew, it's gonna give you a little bit of everything. Your veggies, your beef, which the beef looks minuscule to none. So let's try it. What is that flavor? Oh my God. What is that flavor? Oh, look, I feel bad for the kids in the 20s because that is not a way to go. I can already see the trash cans in the 20s filled with soup. And you could just imagine the big fat lunch lady with her big core, uh, what are they called? Pot. Pot. With a big pot stirring. Brewing up this old fashioned stew. And the thing about the stews, I feel like in the back in the old day, they wouldn't get like fresh stuff and make soup. They'd use all the leftovers. leftovers. So maybe it'd be better or worse. Not sure, wasn't around in the 20s, but let's try this fruit. This wasn't fresh fruit back in the 1920s. This was most likely coming from a can or just like old preserved fruits. They weren't fresh at this time, so let's try it. I, want I used to love these things though. A little cherry and some orange just stuff. overly sweet. That's pretty damn good fruit. Oh, it's so good. From a can or not. That's something I can get behind. And then to wash it down, like in the 10s, the 20s, that was strange. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you'd ever do that, but now you ruin the milk, so now you taste the milk. But with every good I thought, be, I thought it'd be like an Oreo. Not like an Oreo, but with every good cafeteria meal, there's a glass of milk to wash your meal down. So, 1920s, a little bit better than the 10s, yeah. but let's move to the 30s and let's see what they were eating. Did something bad happen in the 30s? We'll get into that. So unfortunately for the people in the 1930s, it was definitely a tougher time for people because of the Great Depression. So their food wasn't as great in the 1930s. It was kind of just, you get what you get and you don't throw fit. That's probably where that term came from. Yeah. So looking at this meal, I think the first thing we bite into are, let's start with our fruit and we'll work our way up. All right. I will say this is the first time you're actually getting fresh fruit in a meal. Yeah. I'm gonna try the apple. Jake has a little banana in his life. Mmm. Mmm. That's a fresh banana. I bet the kids were loving going to school just to have a little bit of a meal. Yeah. Because a lot of times people were dying on the streets because they were so hungry. Good apple, good banana, apples and bananas. Great combination, great pair. But now we're gonna start moving on to a little bit more of a delicacy in the 1930s, and that was a wiener dog. Not the actual puppy dog, but a hot dog. And this the is bud. definitely processed. I mean, if it, as long as it filled the kids up back in the day, I mean, it's still to us nowadays, since we're so lucky, it's a pretty scarce meal. But hey, to each their own, let's try this peanut butter sandwich. Not sure they had jelly back in the day, but they definitely didn't have it at school lunches, which is a peanut butter sandwich. Mm. That's the thickest peanut butter I've ever seen. Where'd you buy that from? 
Thickalot.com. Thickalot.com, my favorite website for mm. all things thick. And to wash down such a delicious peanut butter sandwich, we skipped milk this year. I don't know where they went. Maybe the cows were scarcity, but we got a glass of water. I'm gonna need a glass Maybe of water. not filtered, maybe just from the tap, but either way, good water. Is water that all I need? It's all I need. Mm. Mm, we definitely need some water to wash down that peanut butter sandwich. Another thing they ate in the 1930s because of the Great Depression was Spam. Yeah. So we're gonna just kind of just try it raw. I don't even know if you can eat this raw, but we're gonna do it. Oh, I've never seen Spam until now. And now I know why they call them Spam emails. Oh, They're never good looking. My heart is just starting to race. Okay, oh, it's, it's hard. Oh my God. So they would eat this during the depression because it was a good way to, uh, it was a cheap way to get some protein in. I don't know what Spam is even made of or anything about Spam, I've it's, never had it. It's pork, I think. Let's try it. Mmm. Mm, not as bad as it looks. Mm. Okay, very salty, weird consistency, but the flavor overall is not horrible. It's pretty much just ground up meat. Yeah, it tastes like, like a bologna. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing. That is interesting, but look it, let's get out of the Great Depression and let's hit the 1940s. I need some water, it's so oh. salty. Yeah. The 1940s are here and I can't tell you how excited I am to eat this school lunch. You're a real eager beaver. What's an eager beaver? It's a 1940s slang term for like in a very enthusiastic helper. Wait a second, helper? Yeah. I'm not the helper, you're the helper. Let's jump into this meal, okay? So the first thing we gotta try here is this pudding of some sort. This is like a rice pudding that they would eat back in the day. And let me tell you, it doesn't look good. Good luck. <laughs> I'll be over here. <laughs> hey, wait. All right, here we go. Oh God, it's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Mmm, mm, that's killer diller. What the heck is that? That's also 1940s slang meaning good stuff. This is really good that's stuff. That's pretty tasty. It's better than pudding. It's got the consistency of like a pudding mixed with like oatmeal in it's a way, rice, though. but it's rice. Wow. Look at that. Interesting. Rice. All right, so that's like kind of like the dessert, I feel like, because it's yeah, sweet, Yeah, we, we started tasty. the wrong way. Now let's jump into some veggies. Yeah, Everyone else's favorite dessert. We're really avoiding this hash thing. I don't know about that, but. Peas. How'd you cook these? I didn't. Very from a can. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Just like the 40s. Next thing, before jumping into this hash of some sort here, we're gonna just try some bread. I'm gonna put mine together. You know what? The first time you did it, it looked good, so I'm gonna do it too. So back in the 40s, they would eat pork hash. We only got beef hash here because we're trying not to eat as much pork these days. So let's try it. Mmm, that's really good. That's pulley diller. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Just meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, it has some good kind of seasoning to it where the meat is actually really juicy and tasty. Pretty tasty in the 1940s. I can definitely say they upgraded since the 1930s. That's a good breakfast item. Imagine an egg on top. Mm. Ooh. That might be good. But, like I said, there's only up from here, so let's hit the 1950s. Come on. We're all the way up. Oh, wait. We're not all the way up. This meal. I forgot about the apples. Okay, this is as 1940s as they come, except the yeah. fact that it's plastic, it would be glass back in the day. I think that's the biggest update is they figured out how to juice an apple from the 1930s to 1940s. Yeah, the 1930s, they just gave you an apple. Yeah, now we get the juiced. That's even better. Oh, oh granny I apple. I love apple juice. Hits the spot every time. Woo! I could drink a jug of this. Well, now let's jump to the future and let's go to the 1950s. Let's go. The 1950s were the end of some hard times. This is post-World War II, where people started getting more in depth with spending money in the economy, getting that economic growth of the baby boomers. So with that being said, their lunch meals for the kids definitely improved a lot too. Yeah, lots of protein. We can see we got sausages, we got meatloaf, we got bread, and we got I'm not I, sure what that is. I don't know what the hell that is. Listen, our chef made this and said this is from the 1950s and I don't know, it looks like creamy <laughs> hot dog wieners. I don't know. I don't know. But this is what the kids were eating back in the 1950s, so let's try it. Oh, we also got some good old chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. I'm gonna start with the meatloaf. This meatloaf doesn't look good. So meatloaf was created because they can put a lot of stuff into a small package and it's lots of protein, lots of carbs. Let's try it. Mm, a little dash of barbecue mm. on top, I like that. It's almost like a hamburger patty, mm -hmm. like ground beef. I think meatloaf is such a delicious thing, and I feel like it would make a burger pretty interesting mm. if you slap that in there instead meat, of meat. Meatloaf in America has such bad, like, 
What? A stigma against it. Okay, why? You know? Because meatloaf just sounds like, oh, your mom made meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf you know? for dinner again, ma. Yeah, but like, it's bomb. It's pretty tasty. It's bomb. My mom lie. made us meatloaf, I would eat it. I'd be happy. So next thing we're gonna jump into is the sausage. Everybody loves a good sausage here and there. Definitely gives you that sodium boost, as well as just that good old fashioned protein. I don't know if mine's cooked. It's warm. Tasty sausage. Really kinda, salty. Really salty. Tastes like it came from McDonald's. It does. But this is where things get worse. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what to say about this. So the actual term for this one is sausage shortcake. I don't know everything that belongs inside of it, but I know it doesn't belong in my stomach, so let's yeah. try it. From the pitcher, they use bread, kind of like a sandwich. I'm gonna try it plain because I'm I'm brave. So here we go. Not terrible, but if I was a kid and I saw on the lunch menu that there was sausage shortcake, that day I'm calling in sick. It's kind of like like you would take like whipped cream. Not whipped cream at all. That's like uh, like consistency. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's almost like a clam chowder sauce all mixed in with some Vienna sausage. Uh, Not my favorite, but the one good thing that comes with this meal is some good old fashioned chocolate milk. Families were able to spend more, so why not treat the kids to a good old chocolate milk? Yeah. This tiny ass straw. What is what this? What the hell are you supposed to get the whole thing from there? I don't know. They don't make things like they did in the 1950s. Oh, it's a straw, oh. like extender straw. Woo! Wait. What the? You went the wrong way. Whoop. Oh, oh okay. We did not have that back no then. No way. Poke it in, take a sip. Straw is not as useful as you'd think because of the airflow, but damn good chocolate milk. Slow down now, you're lactose intolerant, uh, friend. Barely got any out of there. So now let's jump into the 1960s, one of my favorite decades because the good old Mustang was born. And they introduced one of my favorite meals to school. Let's find out. Let's check it out. Jake wasn't joking about the 1960s and being excited about the food. Can you guess what we're about to eat by this awesome merch that Jake and I are wearing? That's right, pizza. And if you like the merch we're wearing, you can pick some up at brennantaylor.com. Use code pizza and get 10% off right now. But this offer ain't gonna last. So check this meal out right here, Jake. This actually is probably the highest ranked meal we have so far out of the past 60 years. And we're just saying that because we like pizza. We like pizza and we also like SpaghettiOs, Jello, fruit, and spinach. What the heck is the spinach for? Well, this is the thing. They were trying to get kids to eat a little healthier back in the day, so they actually called this Popeye spinach, and that's where the Popeye cartoon came from, was, you know, he'd eat spinach and he'd get strong. So they would try to trick kids, but I don't know if it actually makes you strong. So let's start light and work our way up. I'm gonna grab a piece of spinach and see if it makes me stronger. Mm -hmm. Oh, it tastes like really bad, oh, though. Yeah, need some kind of dressing. Oh. Mm. Let's go to the Jello. Do you want to just jump to dessert? All right, let's try a little Jello. Okay, so right here, good old strawberry Jello. Oh my gosh! Don't leave any for the imagination. Whoa! Good stuff. Can't complain. So sweet. Kids were probably happy back in the day. That's only if they finished their spinach, of course, because then they get to jump into some sweet fruits. This is some peaches canned. Why is stuff from a can so good? Processed like a mofo, that's it's why. It's been there forever. Mm, delicious. Didn't, didn't Shia LaBeouf in holes like the canned peaches? I think that's all they had. <laughs> Either way, now we're getting into the Italian part of our meal here with some SpaghettiOs and some pizza. So I haven't had SpaghettiOs since I was a kid. Me either. But they actually came out in 1965. Not as good as I remember. No. Those are quite bad, it's actually. kind of ketchup -y. Yeah, not a big fan of the SpaghettiOs, but the pizza, I can get behind this. I can get real behind it. Question, though. Did they have ranch back then and chili flakes and all that? Yeah, we I don't think so. Way, I don't think know? so. We gotta eat it the way it is, so. Here goes nothing. French roll pizza. Rectangular pizza. Mmm, mm. I love pizza. So good. Brandtaylor.com. Mm. You wanna look good like us? Pick one up. That's good. I like the 60s so far. If your mom or dad were around in the 60s, give them a high five yeah. because they ate good as kids. So good. Let's hope the 1970s get even better though. I heard they do. Let's see. So here we are, the 1970s home of disco, baby. Mm. Let's get shaggy, shall we? This meal, I'm gonna say, we are definitely increasing in looks. Yeah. We have a chili cheeseburger, we have some yogurt, some fruit, and some mashed potatoes. And paired with a delicious glass of orange juice. Yeah. So where do we start, my boy? My boy! Let's try some mashed potatoes. So it looks like they're a little bit cheesy mashed potatoes. 
all the rave back in the day. There was something hard in there. Ooh. Bacon. I mean, chef Willie did, did his work today. The chef did his work. It tastes like good old mashed potatoes. That's something that I would be excited ah. about for school. Seeing a chili burger. I mean, I wasn't around in the 70s, but damn. This looks like a well-balanced, well -balanced. not healthy, no, no, no. but balanced on flavor profiles. That's exactly it. Now let's try this yogurt, all right? Hopefully it's good, sugary, delicious yogurt. You hit with that granola. Oreo. Man, you are so unhealthy. <laughs> Next thing we're gonna jump into, speaking on health, is some fruit. Is Everybody that an olive in there? Fruit. I'm not sure what that is. It's a grape. Bussin. Bussin. Something about the little plastic containers with the fruit in there. Fruit cocktails were all the jam back in the day. Yeah. So I can see why that is part of the school lunches. Now let's try this thing that looks really interesting, this chili cheeseburger. How do we wanna do it, bite and swap or? Yeah, bite and swap. I don't care if I'm eating your saliva. Oh. Baby, look at this thing. Stuffed, jammed, and delicious. Oh, oh wow. Mm. Pretty <laughs> fire. Wow. So the 1970s were definitely a start to when things got unhealthy, but yeah. 1980s, we're going up. So oh, it gets a lot worse. Let or should I say better? For the kids, better. Let's see 1980. 1980s were fun because blockbuster movies and MTV reshaped pop culture as we know it. Yeah. And their school lunches were pretty decent. It, it definitely reminds me of the like those uh, hungry meal frozen dinner kind yeah, of Yeah, like it definitely gives you kind of everything you need with a delicious main course, a great little secondary main course, your fruits, a little dessert, and Gatorade. Gatorade was a big thing in the 1980s. It had just launched, so we got a little bit of it all. Let's get to it. First thing I think we should try here it's probably these canned veggies because they don't look good. Not at all. I don't know what I don't any, know of, any of this is. Hamica? I don't know. Himica? Hamica? That's not a fruit. Hickama. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's potato. That's a no. Oh. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> Kids in the 1980s, you must have grown up to be some good-headed people eating veggies like that. No way would I do it nowadays. No. The next thing I wanna jump into are these chicken nuggets. So we started to get into more processed type foods in the 1980s, got a little unhealthier, and they get even worse in the 1990s, just so you know. But here we have some good old chicken nuggets. And we for sure know there ain't no chicken in this nugget, no, probably. No, no, no. <laughs> but damn, it tastes good. That's good chicken nugget. That's a real good chicken nugget. Mm. Mm. Wish they gave you some sauce. Yeah, a little sauce would be nice, but hey. The next thing that'd be pretty prominent in a school lunch at this time would be another rectangular pizza. Those yeah. things were definitely around, even in the 2000s when we were growing they up. They were around when I was in school. So I can't turn it down. I'm gonna take a bite of this thing. Mm. Oh, look. I love oh. pizza. Pick up the merch, mm. right there, I have some good pizza. Mm. Let's wash it down with some Gatorade. Mm. Gotta go for some Gatorade. And last but not least, chocolate delight. Chocolate pudding. Mm. Good stuff. Oh. Ugh. Those were the 1980s. Now I'm excited to present to you the 1990s. Let's jump fast forward 10 more years. Come on. The 1990s, where some of the greatest people who have ever lived have been born. Us too. Either way, this was a decade that they stopped caring about the health of the children. They started yeah. bringing in other outside school vendors to feed them like McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza and Hut. so on. I literally was in school at the end tail of this and I remember walking in and they'd be like, it's Pizza Hut day. Dang, see, I was a little too young to really enjoy this in the 90s. But all I can say is if they were serving McDonald's, I can get behind it. So yeah. first thing they would serve is just like a cheeseburger from here from McDonald's. Oh my God, I haven't seen a Mc cheeseburger in a long time and that is depressing. Are they getting smaller over the years? I don't know. Anyways, for a child, I guess that would be pretty good. You get some fries and of course a Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. This one's gonna be an easy one for us. Let's rip it. Everybody knows McDonald's hits when you really need it to hit, but other than that, maybe only as a kid. Oh, let me tell you, we didn't need it to hit because it's not hitting right now. No, no, no. Think about it, as a kid, to have outside food in school, I remember when my mom on my birthday would bring a pizza to school, yeah. I was the coolest kid on the block. Oh, for sure. Little side note though, because we are new to Nashville, we did not know where McDonald's was when we looked it up. This is a one star McDonald's that we went to, so. 
No wonder why it tastes so bad. <laughs> Back to the video. <laughs> Let's see these McDonald's fries, okay? McDonald's fries. fries have always known to be the best fast food fries. Look, if it wasn't coming from a one-star McDonald's, they probably hit nice. But I'm not, still gonna have a couple more. They're, they're not horrible. horrible. Pretty good. So watch it down. Go, go, go. Oh, go, go, it makes you wanna dance with me. So McDonald's school lunch, cool. I can get behind that. But now let's jump into a new millennium with the millennials. Let's go. But little did those parents know in the 2000s that these packed lunches weren't probably any healthier than the stuff they were getting at schools. They were filled with sugars, filled with other preservatives, but either way, I loved them. They were so good. Oh, oh yes. Literally the same. Literally as a kid, when I would get these pizza Lunchables, I was in heaven. But what kind of guy were you? Did you heat these things up or did you- How were you hitting it up in school? There was the teacher's lounge. You never did that? I wasn't allowed in there. Oh. Let's try these things cold because that's the only way to eat them, but grab your pizza bite. I remember when I was in school, they used to give you a little stick to spread it. Really? A little red Oops. stick, plastic stick. And then one year they just said, Nope. Use your damn finger. You know, I always remember only using my finger. Or sometimes I'd get a pepperoni and I'd use the pepperoni. I, they did, they are skimming yeah, a little cheese. Yeah, look at that. Little ass portion of cheese. It used to be a huge portion. It would be the same size as the pepperoni. And these pepperonis are dry. Oh my God, they're so dry. I don't even think they're real pepperonis anymore. Well, that's what I'm saying. The parents thought it was healthier, but let me tell you, it ain't. Yeah, see, three was always like the max that you put on one. Actually, no, I lied. I used to put five on one just because I wanted more memory. <laughs> Jake likes extra cheese. I like extra pepperoni. Let's see how these things taste. Damn. Mm. Yeah. I remember as a kid, these things were next level. They still hit so good. They're decent, but let me tell you, I honestly prefer the 1990s school lunches more than this. That's not good. That's how I take it back. The one thing that was easy about these Lunchables is they came with a little dessert, this crunch bar right here. And they also came with a drink, a Capri Sun, which I haven't had probably in 10 years either. So, no. And that's, I don't know if it made parents more lazy because they just bought this and threw it into a box. I don't know, or but- it made them smarter. How would you used to drink this? I could never get in the hole because when you would put it through the hole, it'd come out the back. So I would flip it over and go like that. Oh, backside. See, I was more of an in the middle type of guy and I'd pretend I was a mosquito. I don't get it. Like I'm sucking blood. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Oh, straight sugar out the packet. Oh, did you ever used to freeze those things? No, but one thing I used to do, let me show you. You could tell a kid's childhood based off what he would do next with a Capri Sun. Kids these days don't do that. I was so lonely. I'd fold this thing up like this. See, there's still some in there, but I'd flip it and I got a little cell phone. Here's my antenna. <laughs> Hello, who's calling? That's what I would do as a kid. I thought you were gonna blow it up and step on it and make it go boom. See, destructive, imaginative. So another thing a parent would give with their kids Lunchable is one of these delicious fruit roll-ups. And man, do I miss these. Oh, that has the tattoo on it. Oh yeah, it does. Should we try it? Put a tattoo on your tongue. Since I got music out, if you haven't streamed it, look up Brandon Taylor on Spotify. I'm gonna do the little microphone. Your tongue wider than the damn. Oh! You wanna try? No. Okay. Mmm, just like I remember. Pretty good. Pretty decent meal, but let me tell you, the 2010s, we have real personal experience because this is when we were in high school, maybe even some middle school. So this is what we ate in uh, 2010s. And I've been waiting for this day for so long. Here we go. This one comes from personal knowledge. I really remember 2010s being a great time, especially when you got these awesome burritos. When it was burrito day, it was my favorite day. Oh. For sure. The one thing I will say right off the bat is they had the most disgusting water at our school. So we had to get it. They have Dasani. If you drink Dasani, no hate towards you. Just know that there's minerals and weird things in there that yeah. we shouldn't be drinking chemicals. But okay, so when it would be lunchtime, you would run if you knew it was burrito day. You'd run there. You'd run. And because, why? Well, because they ran out. And when you were that poor son of a gun who didn't get a burrito, this is what they would hand you, a Crustable. And you know you didn't like these, damn it. This is the last of the, the bottom of the barrel. But now, since it's been over 10 years since we've been in high school, I am looking forward to trying both of these things. Yeah, let's check this out. Is it two packs or it's one? It's one. I oh. used to remember them being two in the mofos. <laughs> they used to be two in one. They're jipping us. Let's get tasted, shall we? One thing everyone should know, everyone had one of these in their backpack at all times, and it was Probably. either complete 
<laughs> or it was a complete crumpled mess. Fortunately for us, we have one that is solid, solidified, not crumbled up. I will say we should check the expiration date on this because it looks like it's from high school. May 2024, we're good. So let's jump into this school meal. First thing I'm gonna try is the fruit because in the 2010s, they did start to try to give you a little bit more of healthier options yeah. with your meal. And the good thing about this is, this is the time where there, we had such a diversity of students. Mm. So mm -hmm. you know, you could find the student with the tahini and go and oh. get some from them. Cause mm -hmm. you know they had them, they made the gummies. They were the, there, yeah. Mm. Great fruit, loved it back in the day, love it still today. Next thing we have is some celery. Celery was something that they taught in health class that would literally burn calories while you eat because it was so hard for your body to break down that it used, acts as like a broom inside your stomach, brooming everything out. So here's a bite of that from my old health teacher. Mm. Never really liked it much though. <laughs> it's only good with lemon pepper on it. I guess we eat this one. I mean, everyone, I mean, everyone, everyone knows. What I don't want to open that. Let's save that for we an emergency. Gotta, <laughs> gotta save it for the end of the world. <laughs> All right, let's try the burrito. Oh, oh I, look. I miss this. It's gonna be hot. I miss I school. I'm gonna take, take a bite of it. Okay, let's go. Oh, mm. man, those were the good days. That mm. was so good. And they gave you like this little hot sauce, but it was like- oh, The best days were those days, the burrito days. But let's try to feel what it feels like to be on the other side of the spectrum and be the poor son of a gun who missed burrito day. I just remember this thing's had so much jelly. Yep, so much jelly in them, and I couldn't handle that. I liked a nice mixture of peanut butter and jelly. This is too much. Damn. It's not that bad. Not bad, but it definitely ain't good. I don't know, I have much more appreciation to it now. Back yeah. in the day, I hated them. This I could actually handle. I think you're supposed to toast them, though. Mm, I don't know. Or freeze them. That's what I've heard. I'm done. I'm definitely not letting this go to waste. I am, I'm fuller than a tick. So there you have it, 100 years of school lunches. Let me know in the comments down below, what did you eat for lunch at school? If you post a clip from this video and it goes viral on TikTok, I'll give you 100 bucks. So get that bread, get that head, then leave. Pick up the merch brand tail.com and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm so exhausted. I'm always nauseous. Praying that I'll stop this. I'm so exhausted.